Hello everybody, it's Danny and Wanda from Deep South Homestead. This is our Danny corn, and God blessed us last night with a little bit of rain, and it's cool this morning, and you see an orange hat moving through there. Let's see what Danny's up to in the middle of this Danny corn. You know that's taller than you. Huh? That's taller than you. You can't even see your orange hat when you're in there. I know. It's like seven feet tall. Uh, so yeah, why Hannah, are you taking my corn? Well, we're in a moderate drought. Even though we got a little shower last night, it, it wasn't even enough to, I mean, it, the, the roots are dry, you know. Um, it helped the corn. Don't get me wrong. It helped it. But it's not going to fix what's going on here. Uh, and if it's too thick, we won't ever make anything. And it doesn't matter if it's big old pretty healthy stalks or not. They still, if they're not spaced apart like they need to be, uh, it's not going to work. So I gradually go through every day and I get some out. And I'm taking them to feed to the cows uh, so we don't waste anything. Uh, that's just one of the morning chores here at Deep South Homestead. I do this every morning. I go through and get a few out, praying that the rain would come and soak the ground enough that uh, we could get a break from this relentless heat. But I just looked at the weather. Next week is uh, it's going to all be just, or well, actually this week when this video comes out, it's just relentless heat all week and the triple digits, you know. So I might as well, if I want to have anything, I have to just bite the bullet take some of the corn out and just hope for the best. That's all we can do. Okay, guys, on the Danny corn that I've uh, kind of created here, it needs to be about 16 inches to two foot apart, depending on your soil type. This is really sandy soil here. And because we don't have lots of heavy nutrition in the soil, then I like to space mine out. And you can see the difference here. You see this little one right here? It's planted right up against this one. You see like where they spaced out. Now like this one's almost three feet apart here. Look at the difference in the size of these stalks. And look at the brace roots coming out here. Now these things, you get this out where you can see right here. See those big old brace roots coming out there? They'll come out right here. And then, then they'll come out right here. There'll be big old giant roots sticking all the way down to the ground. Here's another one here. See how big, I mean, I, my hand can barely reach around that. And you get two of them here close together. You see what I got? See this little stalk right here? It's just a little bitty one. And it's not big and tall like these over here are. So I, I come through here every day and I'll get 10 or 12 stalks out of here and take them and feed them to the cows because the cows love them. And it helps to space this corn out during this drought situation. This is a prime example of what I'm talking about here. We got a bunch of stalks that's close together. These are like two together right here where the planter dropped two seeds and two seeds here. Now this is okay. But you see this little one right here? This little scrawny one here? It ain't even got no root system on it hardly. You gotta take that kind of stuff out of there. And that leaves your spacing a lot better. And your corn stands a better chance of actually making. You don't want to have little old bitty spintly little stalks like this up here and then have a big old ear of corn come on it and the first little windstorm that comes along, the whole thing's just gonna break over and fall to the ground. And it's never going to mature. So we like to get that kind of little stuff out of here. We have a tropical system that's coming into the Gulf here in about, let's see, today is the 15th in about eight days. Uh, we got a tropical system coming in. We don't know if it's coming up in here or not. They're saying it's possible. And if it does, it could blow every bit of this down. You know, every year we have that happen in the deep south. And of course the corn lots of times will turn and come back up as long as it don't do it while it's in ear. As long as it does it before it ears and tossles, it'll come back up and we're able to uh, salvage our corn. Now this is probably, look, just looking at the top in it, uh, let me see here. Yeah, we're still, we're still another good another week and a half to two weeks before this will even start tossling. This stuff will get up here 12, 15 feet tall and uh, then start making corn. And when it does, if I can keep the fertilized to it, uh, it'll make corn and it makes lots of it. So 
That's the beauty of this particular variety of corn I have here. You see how dark green it is looking out across here? That is, uh, I poured the nitrogen to it. I poured the phosphorus to it. I poured the potassium to it. It's been limed heavy. I mean, it's been done everything that needs to be done. And the reason I've done this, and there's some companion stuff I've done here, transgender beans that we planted from Jung Seed. I put the corn on this side of it because we're going into some intense heat and these uh, pole beans don't like heat. They're a cool morning plant. And when that morning sun hits them, it'll just destroy them. So what I done was I planted this corn here where the, the morning sun will not hit them once they get, the corn gets taller. And the beans will continue to last a lot longer into the summer months, we're hoping. So they're loading up with blooms. We don't know what they are. Uh, we call them the transgender bean because there's like three different kinds of beans on them here. And, you know, we ate some of them the other night. They seem to be edible and they didn't have a really bad taste. So the only problem is we were going to save seed this year and we're not going to be able to. So another year lost due to faulty company seeds. Hey, Miss Daddy. Daddy. Doing this, Huh? Come on, girl. Come on here, girl. Come on. Boy, you like that stuff, don't you? Yeah. Miss Betty's growing. She is growing up to be a nice young lady. Look at that. She likes her some of this corn now. The only problem is you have to stay in the pen to eat it. You can't go out in the field and eat it. Yeah, we don't allow cows in the cornfield. And Miss Betty may be going to a new home. She might be going to a new home. She gets some of the best stuff to eat. Now, the other cows don't get this. Miss Betty's been getting all the corn. You can see some of the stalks on the ground down there where she's been eating the tops off of all of them. She likes her some corn now. I think I about spoiled her. Yeah, I think she's spoiled. She's spoiled rotten. Somebody's done cleaned all the English peas up. Yep, they're all gone. They died. Uh, we got a few tomatoes. These that are you the got Arkansas here. travelers. We got to make sure that uh, these are an indeterminate, evidently, because boy, they have taken off. I mean, they're definitely not a determinant. I hadn't looked to see yet, but boy, they sure are some pretty plants. And then, of course, we got the squash here. See a yellow leaf? You got to get out. Yeah, that's one thing people don't understand about squash. Squash has got to be kept pruned. You know, you got to take, you got to spend time pruning them. Uh, you get these leaves that look like this right here. Uh, they they got to come off of here. That's how disease and all get started. You got to have airflow. People just got to understand. So you've got to do these kind of things if you're gonna have squash. We got some squash in here. Now they're gonna have to be washed because we got a little shower last night. I mean, this old sandy soil. The old dirt spraddles up on them pretty bad. Uh, now this is a yellow crook neck right here. Uh, we got some more bad leaves here to get off. Oh, let's see here. Get them old. There's a nudging right on it. What this does too is it opens up the plant where air can flow around through it and where the bees can find the flowers a lot easier. A good sharp knife and don't take long. You can go down through here. I already hear the bees this morning already. Boy, boy, boy. And bees is happy. They got all these big old blooms. I'm trying to figure out how to get to this one to One thing, uh, I used to pick squash and sell them commercially. 
Uh, if you're going to sell commercial or anything like that, if you want these real pretty squash, you're supposed to wear gloves to pick them because your fingernails will, uh, will actually cut into them. Y'all notice I'll throw them over next to the okra. There's something about okra leaves and squash leaves. If they're laying down the rows, weeds will not grow where they're at. Uh, I don't know if it's because it shades it, puts something in the soil. I learned that years ago whenever I was farming. And I want to show y'all something. Look at here. Look right here. I ain't going to pick him up. Uh... Hang on here, man. Let me do this right here. Guys, the black woolly worm. Look at that. We found some yesterday. Found them yesterday. And this is, uh, this is summertime. I mean, well, yeah, you might as well say we're fixing to be in summertime. And these things are starting to pop up everywhere here. I don't know what that means, but, uh. Aren't they a cool weather? Well, it's supposed to tell you what the winter's, winter's going to be like, so. <laughs> you know, I mean, that one didn't have very wide yellow bands on him, but um, you never know what's fixing to happen here. You want to go down through here? There's a zucchini up under there. Yeah. You know, everybody, I was telling people I figured out a lot about zucchinis. And uh, let me tell you all a little bit about them while I'm here. Zucchinis need a pH of seven or greater. That is the one of the biggest issues is that and keeping them pruned. That's another thing. You got to keep these rascals pruned. Keep them old leaves out of there. Like this old stuff like this. You, you got to keep that stuff out of there. But you got to keep that pH up there about seven or better. And if you do... These zucchinis do good. Now, I'm going to say something here, and I don't have no proof on it other than the fact that it works for me. I have no scientific evidence behind it. That's what I'm going to say. I have had no squash bugs. I've had no squash vine borers. Nothing for the last two years. The year before that, they destroyed everything we had. The only one thing that I have done different is I have used Dr. Earth's Golden Bloom liquid phosphorus that stuff stinks to high heaven and and i don't know if that scent i put it on every week i put it around the base of these plants here i mix it up put it out i don't know if that scent has something to do with it or not all i know is i'm not having no problems and i'm just going to share that with y'all now uh we got another big old zucchini here. Now that's about the size that we like right here. We don't want them to get much bigger than that. And we got some, uh, I see another one over here. We got some different kind of zucchinis down here. We don't know what they are. Uh, one of our subscribers sent us a whole bunch of packs of seeds and I picked a pack of zucchinis out and planted them. Uh, and forgot what the name was. I forgot what the name was. I can go back and look, but uh, now that's a good eating zucchini right there. And guys, I don't do nothing to these things other than put that liquid phosphorus to them. That's all I'm doing. Now the next thing here, if you like straight neck squash, this is the gold prize from Hoss Tool. Now I'm going to tell you what, this squash you will not beat. This is the most prolific squash I have ever grown in my life. It is the number one squash. It's, it is the number one squash, and that's it right there. House Tools did great picking this one out. This one here, they done. that's probably the best yellow squash I've ever come across. Gold Prize is perfect name, right? It, it is the perfect name. It's a hybrid, but it is the perfect name. I mean, you just look at this plant right here. I mean, it's... You got another one like that. And trust me, you don't need, if you don't eat a lot of squash, you don't need many plants. Six is plenty. Six would be more than enough. Now here is that, that zucchini that I was telling you guys about. I'm gonna go ahead and pick one of them here. Now that thing looks like a watermelon. Look at that. 
It's just as striped as a watermelon is. And the leaves are a touch different. The leaves are completely different. They're variegated, or whatever you want to call that. Um, They're they, they, serrated. Serrated. I serrated. Guess. Something. There's a I better don't... word than variegated. <laughs> um, get these leaves out of here. Here's another one right here. Now they're not getting large in diameter. Or we're picking them too early, but they I don't want them big with seeds. But they're getting a lot. Look at that. That thing's 12, 14 inches long. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? Man, and I'm telling you. And this was seeds that um I think it these come out of a, didn't they come out of just like a like, like she a, got them at dollar stores like a dollar and stuff. Store seeds or something, something, something like that. that and yeah. they're doing amazing. Yeah, I mean you look at this in here now. I, I don't want to twist my plant over, but Look at, Look at that. that. This is our first time picking these. This first time we picked them. Yep, first time. I mean, you got a few limbs that got to cut leaves that's got to come out. Yeah, I got to set this bucket down. That's up to getting heavy. I figured it would be. Let me get some of these leaves out of here. That's the secret too, right there, guys. You got to, you just got to get this stuff off of here. And I hate to go off and leave anything because I'll get to the end of the row and I'll forget. And you got to prune. That's that's the name of the game. Of course now, <laughs> y'all have ever watched me many years, you'll know, squash is one of the greatest musical instruments that was ever made. You gonna make them a squash horn? Uh, I think I might make them a squash horn here. Let me get, I gotta get one of these out of the bottom here anyway. You know, lots of people never seen a squash horn before. This is something you used to do for kids all the time. If you had kids with you, you know, they got thorns all over there. You don't want thorns on it there, you know. And if you got kids and you're trying to keep them interested in the gardening or whatever you're doing, uh, let me get my, I got to get this just right. My knife is. You didn't cut all the way to the end. You cut back from the end. Yeah, I cut back from the end just a little bit because you don't you don't want your air going through it. Just solid right there on the end. You gotta keep you gotta cut it where it's solid. <laughs> you know, you do that for kids, and kids just get to be it just gets to be a a fun thing for them to come to the garden if you make them a squash horn. <laughs> you know, children will have a blast with that. All Ad right, adults too. Yeah, on with picking. All right, guys, this here is our mustard seeds. Now, they're not quite ready to harvest yet. They're getting pretty close. Um, we got a few more days. I imagine by the middle of this week out here, uh, this high, intense heat we got coming, these things going to pretty much be ready to take up and get out of here. Because what will happen is if you don't get them when they start drying, the little pot will bust open and all the seed will fall out on the ground. So... Now, technically, once they get to a certain point, you can pull the plant up and hang it upside down somewhere, but I don't do that. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough space. Uh, I usually just let them get real close to drying on the plant, and then I go and cut each individual branch off and put them in a number three wash tub and let them finish drying out there. Well, we come up here to the end of the garden, guys, and here's a uh, a butter pea. that we have, We've had butter peas here last like, two or three years since we had butter peas here. And uh, they volunteer to come back up every year, and when they do, we'll let one grow, and uh, we'll get the we'll get the beans off of it. And Miss Wanda mixes them in with other dry beans that we have, and she'll make a soup out of them or something like that. So we always love the ones that God gives us. And of course, now here we have the Star of David okra. It is beginning to bloom, probably within. I'm gonna say, let's see, looking at it. <coughs> With the probably with the heat we got coming next week or this week, I'm gonna say we'll probably have okra uh, by next weekend. It's possible we'll have good okra, and we're looking really forward to that. And then of course here next to it we have our sweet potatoes, guys. All these sweet potato slips have come from a couple of mineral tubs full of sweet potatoes, and I've got this patch. I've got another patch, and I've got another patch, and they're still making sweet making potatoes. sweet potato slips. What about maybe 15, 20 potatoes? If, I, if or was probably, it even that? Probably about 15 to 20 potatoes is making me. 
I don't know. I don't hundreds. Know how, I don't know how many hundred I have now at this point. It's several hundred I have out. And these must be the last ones you just did. <clears throat> these are. These are the last ones I planted you right here. You can see they're uh, just now, and, and the heat was getting to them. So yeah. luckily we got a rain. God blessed us. But look at these. You can tell the stages by looking at them. These were the first ones, these first one, two, three, four rows were yeah, the now first ones. Yeah, I have ones. to come here with a hoe before long and go through here and get the grass out, and then they should just shade everything. Now, I ran through it with the cub the other day and cleaned nothing but the middles out so that they don't have any grass in the middles, and that makes them look real clean. It gives me the opportunity to come back with a hoe and clean out anything that's left and then just watch them Cadillac. Now down here, you know, the white ones are already blooming on the other end down there. See this, that bottom row is the white sweet potatoes and they're already blooming. You got a couple right up here at the front that's starting to bloom. Isn't that amazing? <clears throat> now those are the best, the very first row we planted right there. Daddy always told me, there he was, there's a bloom right here. Right there. Yep. Dad always told me if you want potatoes, plant you some white ones because they'll always make. All right, so this is the front garden. Yep. Now we got to go uh, to the greenhouse. Got to go to the greenhouse. I think we got some beans we got to pick at the greenhouse. I'm not sure. It might even have some peppers. I don't I know. I got yellow wax beans. We've got peppers. And our potatoes in your greenhouse we are dead. we got to dig potatoes. We're fixing to dig potatoes. I forgot. Now, about I grew that. some fantastic potatoes in mine. We had several meals, and they were big, nice nah, fingerlings. Uh, yeah. We're going to see what Danny done, and he is. We're going to see. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I ain't took real good care of them. Our handy dandy footrest, our door stop. Yep. Well, here we are. Oh, our little friend. Yeah, we got a bird in here that lives. It's got a nest up here on the top of it. It's a dove. Um, keeps flying into everything around here. All right, so All right. the potatoes are dying, so we need a. Yeah, lots of people ask, how do you know when to pick a potato? This is one of them. <laughs> when the plant dies, that's all I can tell you. And we got to leave my um, raspberry. raspberry in here. Okay. Let me get here now. If I can get to sit down. Old bum knee, it makes it hard. Uh, now I'm not going to use no fork on these. I'm going to just try to do it by hand. This ground should be... Very soft. It should be soft. I don't even know what kind of potatoes these are, to be honest with you. It looks like a blue one. Yeah, this one was one old blue one I stuck in here. It didn't, it didn't really do anything. But these, I'm hoping these French fingerlings is the one that. I hope they make some taters. Some small ones. Yep. Let me see what we got here. This is really the size that I really like right here. <laughs> they do well. They, they cook well. They cook really well. That's what I like about them. They they cook really really well. The larger ones make good French fries. Yeah, the bigger ones do. They make, but these right here you can actually slice them in half, and they they really, uh, really cook out well. Um, them right there, we take them uh, snap beans and stuff like that, them green beans, and throw them in with them or English peas. Man, that's some really really good eating. Now these little taters like that right there, I just throw them back in the soil. I'm getting a few. Yeah, these, like I said, I put a lot of these back into the soil. So they'll just come back. There's some bigger ones. These were the last ones we planted here. Yeah, and the heat was taking its toll on the these. The heat definitely took its toll Even on in a high tunnel. Yeah, in a high tunnel here, because this one's been closed up a lot. We haven't got the back side up yet. So it looks like l really late here didn't do as well. Mine were about three times the size of yours. Yeah, yours were But it was a lot, earlier. A lot earlier than mine was. And my plants never died like this. Yeah, mine. The, this 100 and something degree temperature, it don't matter what you do. These potatoes taters, don't like it. They can't take it. That's why I'm telling y'all, we can grow potatoes here 
pretty much year round except for in the high tones except for in the very very hot part of the summer okay guys there's what we got um there's a few meals out of that i believe will be okay um you know it's, a lot of it's my fault i'll be honest with you uh i didn't come in here and dump a lot of fertilizer in here and all like i normally do this is just pot and soil i put in here because we had the graze on issue and uh, I had to dig all the dirt out of this whole bed. And I, I just didn't have time to go scoop it up with a tractor in the woods and go through it. So I just ran to town, bought a whole bunch of bags of pot and soil, come in here and dumped it in here, and basically just planted the potatoes in it. Uh, it said it had nine months of feeding in the potting soil and stuff like that. So I dumped it in here, mixed a little perlite in with it, and watered it a few times. I told Ms. Wanda, I said, don't overwater them because they will rot. And she took me to word. She didn't overwater it. And um, the lack of fertilizer and a lot of the lack of moisture, intense heat, is one of the reasons they didn't do as good as they should have done. So, but it's okay. Um, because we that's, that's how you We still have a few meals. We still got a few meals out of it. And now we've got the bed opened up, uh, ready to replant. Now, I don't know exactly what we're going to replant in here. But I do know this. I'm going to line it, check the pH. We're going to fertilize a fool out of it, and I'm going to plant something back in here. I just don't know what yet. Now here, guys, we have our white seedless grapes here. Look at that. Oh, yeah, I'm looking so forward to this. If we can just keep them going. I mean, they're hanging in here by the piles everywhere. Now, a lot of them fell off because it just got so dry on us, but um, we are monitoring it a little bit better than what we was. And taking our time here, and we have grapes hanging everywhere in here. Now these are the white seedless ones and so far they're hanging in here now we've got some we've got some horseradish next to it here kind of looks like weeds to be honest with you but horseradish is a weed it basically. Is basically i think it is a and weed. it's got seed flowery stuff yeah, they may have got, we may actually get some seeds off of it um I'm not sure not sure just yet i don't think you can kill it once you got it started i think, I think that's why we put it in pots to be honest with you now, here's some of our sweet potato slips I was telling y'all about. I got to pull these up this morning and go try to get them in the ground here right quick. Uh, we got two pots of them right here. And look at this 100-degree temperature in this greenhouse with that shade cloth on here. Look what we got here, guys. Look Isn't at that the, amazing? Look at this thing. You can't even put your arms around That's, it. I think it's huge. And look, in amongst it here, we've got uh, sweet potato, sweet potato slips. slips. Oh, Malabar. We got Malabar spinach. <laughs> All that stuff's coming up in here. <laughs> and look at my Malabar over there. Look at that Malabar. Now, you think that... Look how big those leaves are. My hands are big, and look at that. That leaf is as big as my hand is. Look makes a good wrap. Ooh, makes a fantastic And look wrap. what Wanda's been doing. Wanda done put a rope up there for it to make it up to the top. Well, I want it to go everywhere. It's one of them things, guys. You just got to do what you got to do here. All right, guys. We got our greasy beans going here. I got these from Jared up at Flutie Lick homestead youtube channel um i come back here and just stuck some in here i didn't know whether they'd come up or not and so far they're doing all right um we're gonna let them grow up on the trellis we're gonna just let them go see what they do um hopefully they'll make some beans this year and i'll get to try a kentucky greasy bean we got a little froggy friend yeah, we have lots of frogs in here. They come in here and they uh, get the bugs at night and stuff like that. And we got some, look at these yellow Marconis here. I picked some of these a couple of days Ooh, ago. Ooh, look at that yellow Marconi. Now, this ain't going to get no longer right here, so I'm going to get it off. That, <laughs> it kind of got stunned or something. It got something. stunned in the back a little bit. Look at this one. I mean, isn't that nice? And we could leave them till they go yellow. Oh, I could leave them till they turn. But I, I see something lurking way in the background back here. What is lurking? Let's see what this is right here. Probably a strawberry, huh? Look what's lurking in the background back there. <laughs> Couple of strawberries. Couple of strawberries, you know. And look at this bed of strawberries. I mean, I'm sitting here looking. They're gorgeous. Man, that thing's pretty back in there. That strawberries is really, they're really kicking it now. They are. I keep looking to see, do I have any more? Uh, I, if you keep these peppers picked off of there, they'll, uh, the plant will just keep 
making more and more. This is and one more. of our three year old plants. It's the third yeah, year this is we've the third had. Third year we've had this thing. I mean, it's uh, we done broke a limb out of it right here. The pepper got the heavy limb broke. Uh, and these are from uh, these are I grower think grower solution. Grower solution. Yeah, these are Grower Solution strawberries here. And there's a little bitty one here done turned red. I'll snatch it up right quick and, you know. But they're thick and pretty. Oh, they're thick in here. They're too thick, to be honest with you. we got to get them out. We say that every year. They've been here two years. I gave away over 100 plants out of here. Oh, that's right. You did take a few. But yeah, I took over 100 out and gave to your you daughter, can't, Amy. Can't tell it. That's what them beans on that hill are supposed to be looking like. Yellow beans. These are the Cherokee, These are Cherokee yellow, yellow wax, yellow wax beans. beans. This this pot has nothing but pot and soil in it. That's why you have to amend the pot and soil. Even if you use it, you still got to amend it. You just can't throw it in here. This is what happens. You need a little bit of something added to it. Yeah. In greenhouses and high tunnels, magnesium is your enemy. It uh, literally, you have to put magnesium to everything in a high tunnel. Let's check. These got the same problem here. I got to get some magnesium to them. And uh, these are... Uh, Yellow beans here. We there's one right under. Oh, under your hand. Yep. These we uh we just eat fresh every day off of these. We um these are not made we're not we don't have these in here to be canning or anything like that. Mainly grilling. Main, that's it, our main thing is just for grilling because they, they grill really nice. And throw them in there with the rest of them. Get some magnesium to them. Yeah, I'm going to have to come out here and put some magnesium to them, that's for sure. Uh, I mean, they're just real pretty beans. And people go, well, they start out green and turn yellow. No, they don't. Yellow wax beans are supposed to be yellow. See? They're supposed to start out yellow. See, these, they all start out yellow. No matter how little, they're kind of yellow. Even that yeah. little T90 one down there is kind of yellow. Okay, I think that might be all of them. But in this gorgeous. Ooh, look at that Malabar spinach. Hey, ain't that so pretty? Look at that guy. Big old leaves on the that. The leaves stuff. will get as big as Danny's hands yeah. together. Yep. This is our Fuji jalapeno plant, and it is finally growing some. I came in here and I put some uh, liquid phosphorus to it because uh, it was blooming, and you need that phosphorus when they're blooming. And here is a not so hot jalapeno right here. We'll try that later and see how it does. Yep, we're gonna check it out later and see how it does. Now we, we should be able to. We've tell got a the bunch difference. on there, but they're not ready. Yeah, they're not quite there. Um, it looks like it's gonna load up pretty good. And we'll see. I'm gonna have to put a little bit more uh, nutrition to it. But other than that, uh, it looks like it's doing pretty good. Oh, whoo, look at them carrots! Ah, I better check them out right quick. This one to harvest you if you. Yeah, I know you had me a carrot salad there the other day. Uh, I didn't realize they had gotten this far along. Um, I hadn't been out here to even look at them really, to be honest. I've been staying so busy. We got this just nice little carrots right here. Cool. Wouldn't hurt. We can get us a few carrots. About three or four. Four at least. Yeah, probably three or four of them there. Let me kind of check around through here. Get three or four of these carrots out of here. The heat is done starting to get to them. I can look at them and tell that. So that nice little rain will help. Look at there. Look at that. <laughs> One more. One more. Let's just kind of move on down here a little bit where it's so thick at down here. Might not be as big. Might not be as big down there, but the tops is all going to start dying on here pretty soon. And, we got to take uh, them. We're going to have to take them no matter what size they are. You know, uh, I see the ground cracking around them. I just go ahead and get another. I'm going to get two more. Now they got to be thinned out. There no. we go. Isn't that nice? Look at that. <laughs> Summer carrots are never as good as wintertime carrots. These won't be as sweet as the winter ones are, but they're still carrots. Welcome to the Queen Dome. Now I've hung my ferns up up there and they seem to be doing really good. I water them every day. I've got a couple of potted plants and you see stuff starting to just hang over with them. I've got my 
um, peppercorns on each of the four corners and they're starting to just, I mean, look how green. They're beautiful. And I, I don't know flower names, but I got this type flower. They're white here and purple over here. We've got lavender and look, my lavender's starting to dry. And lavender's good to put around some of your plants to detour bugs. My basil, I take some of the basil and put around things. Uh, Miss Lippy brought me basil here and here. I've got two of those, but look at these beans. Look at them. Isn't this awesome? Look at the, look at the way they're blooming. That's look at like, the blooms. That's butter beans, ain't yeah, it? Yeah, look. You see that? Boy, that's pretty there now. I mean, this is huge. This is just the old-timey speckled, speckled butter, butter beans. beans. Yeah, I think they're just the speckled ones. Um, they're doing really good. Look at good. that, guys. I mean, I those things. I think they're either, did I plant green ones? I think it's the speckled ones. I don't remember. Anyway, it's butter beans. This is my tomatoes. Let's back up here and let's look at these tomatoes these here now. These are the, um, I don't remember which one. I, I thought they were blue tomatoes, but they're not turning blue. No, they ain't blue, I can tell you. That it's looks like blue. some kind of Roma or something. So I'll have to go back and look, but they, they're they in clusters. If you'll look, let me see, down here. You see how they are in clusters and they're little long like Romas? Marzianos or something, I yeah, don't know. Yeah, I don't remember the names, but anyway, that's what they're looking like. Um, these tomatoes Boy, they're are pretty. amazing in here. They are pretty. And this is my yellow wax beans. Look at this. Look at the oh, difference in look at the difference in here than the ones in our pot. So we are. See, See this is where you take green. care of them, what they look like. Yeah. And look at this. Look under here. Look at that. This one just spends time in here. She spends time in hers. I'm out working on everything else. Huh? And uh, these. Are you talking about some grilling one now? Look at that. Ooh. Isn't that gorgeous? Man, those things are about eight inches long. And this is about the fourth time I've picked these to keep them healthy. I come in here and take these leaves out. I'm like Danny. When you get these bad leaves that are they're not helping your plant. Take them out. I take them out. It's called pruning. It's called pruning. People gotta learn to prune. That's one thing you have to learn to and do. You have to come out here every day. You can't just do yep. this on the weekends yeah I, you'll probably have some i prove that in mind you got to come out every day if you don't oh yeah look at that um if you don't come out every day and take out some of this stuff then it it just your plants aren't as pretty aren't as healthy and your nutrition tries to go to these dead leaves and it doesn't help your plants so i mean you see that and that's just right here i ain't even got over here you see how many I've done picked? And how many blooms are still on them? Yeah. I'm still amazed with this right here, these butter beans. I know, are they beans. beautiful? <laughs> butter beans love heat. And look at the, how the color is, is just phenomenal. Now, did you go ahead, uh, did you put the calcium nitrate I told you to put to, to your my stuff? tomatoes, yes. Okay, I, you'd ask me about it. What about the corn and all that, did you? Uh, the corn got fertilized yesterday. You got uh, this right here. You got some kind of watermelon growing there. This is a watermelon. Uh, okay. A lady sent me some seeds. The seeds are so unusual. They've got. Hold on. Is that the ones that you had that looked like? Uh, so funky looking. It looked like a bean old. or something. Yeah, pretty speckledy, weird looking seed. It it looked like a watermelon seed. I'm crawling off down there. I get that one. Yeah, we got to kill bugs. This is what we do in a high tone, or Ms. Wanda does. She comes through here and she sees a bug on anything. She's like, she's worse than a crow. I'm going to get him. She's going to get um, him. But anyway, these seeds, they're kind of like half black, half tan. Beautiful, beautiful seeds. The watermelons only get about yay big. The last box melon, yeah. man. And so I wanted to try them, and I'm putting them on here on my trellis because I wanted to be able to keep them going up, and I've got two three plants one this one isn't doing as well it's just kind of it's shaded up under that corn yeah it's shaded under the corn and it may not do it but may this not corn, now that's is it what kind is that the japanese holus popcorn holus no holes in it supposed to well they said limited I, okay i'm sure, it's I'm sure i was fixing to say <laughs> i ain't ever seen a popcorn that didn't have holes Slippy's, um this is squash now she this brought me See how pretty it's doing? Look how pretty that is, guys. I pruned the leaves yesterday. Look and at them yellow. Look at the intensity couple, of the yellow. Yeah, took out a couple of um, wow. squash we had for supper. Ate those yesterday, okay. Yeah. 
And then I always put flowers. Got and your I've marigold. Got, looks I've like. got some carrots that I put in here just to see. And see that looks. Oh, it's like a pansy or something? Or is that what is I it? I forgot what they're called. But anyway, they're hid up in there. They're coming out. And then I've got these. A different one. Those here. are your marigolds. Look yeah. like. And we still got Egyptian onions. This yep. is my mint doing really well. Look at my shard. Look at shard. Oh, yeah. And then look at this peppercorn. This peppercorn is, Ooh. look, I mean, it has just come out. And I'm trying to root some. I yeah, you can actually some. you can actually stick it to the ground. It'll actually just root. And that way I'll have some. People keep asking me how to get them. I'm trying to root some. Uh, our petunias. That petun you can't kill that thing. It's been it, in that pot now for, what, two years, two three years, years something like that? Years. Um, then... Oh, that's amazing. Is this, an, is this another one of Ms. Lippy's uh, squashes right here? No, this is mine. Is this, this is a gold mine. prize? I don't remember. It might be. It looks like it the way I it is. I think it's a gold prize. Look how pretty that thing is. But, yeah. I mean, you see. That is so, I got the a color is amazing. There. You see my bee? My bee friend? Yeah, the bees come in here. We open the doors during the day and the bees come in. Yeah, my bee friend. And then... This got flower's another. been here two years, and it just keeps. Yeah. Keeps and You got going. your alligator. My aloe veras. Aloe veras, yeah. And then I put. I don't remember what kind of plant this is, but it's coming back out and fixing to bloom. Then a few beans, and these have struggled. Yeah. This side, I can see you got an insect issue right here. We have insects that keep wanting to get over here and destroy anything I put in here. So we got. This is side the sun hits in the morning. Yeah. But look at this. Look at this mom. People have been waiting to see this thing bloom. But this look. thing is probably, what, three? Gosh, that thing is... <laughs> it's like four or five feet across. Oh, look my word. I have never, ever, ever, ever saw a mom get that big. Plus, blooming in May. And blooming in May. That's thin. a fall plant. That's made to plant, bloom in October. But look at this. Isn't it gorgeous? That is, boy, I'm and telling you. Is this radishes? This is my radishes. I have been eating out of them, I, but again, they're probably you, too thick. Too thick, I can tell you. Danny tells me everything's too thick. Yeah, Miss Wanda plants stuff way too thick. Look at that radish. See, I can grow radishes. She I can grow or some. Grow, grow as many, but I can grow radishes. Um, I can there have you a go. bite or you two. You can have a eat. couple of radishes today, yeah. So that goes in there. And then my sunflowers, there, you see over there. Yeah, one of them's actually done going to seed, looks yeah. like. And then look here. I don't know if I can turn yeah, it. Yeah, I think so. Up. You might break it turning it around. See? Look at that. Isn't that pretty? That draws the pollinators in here. Yeah. And these are a, I think this is a Hoss Tool tomato. I just don't remember what variety. But, I mean, you see they're hanging. They got tomatoes all over them. Yeah, good little here. tomato starting. Yeah. I just did three or four, and I think there's four of them. Yeah. And then I put some running beans here. Because running beans did great last year in here. Yeah. So I did two varieties. I did one here. And then look at these. I don't remember varieties. I forget. This is those. Uh, it looks like the. Um, um, uh, Cherokee. Cherokee. Uh, yeah. That's what, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, I think. These may be. Some I think this just be some seeds that just voluntarily came up. look. They are yeah, amazing. They got these that purple color to them. Beautiful. Now my eggplant, it tries. It'll put on blooms and stuff, but I'm gonna tell uh, you what. Oh, I see a culprit right here. You gonna get him? I'm gonna get him. We have never had these until this year. Y'all know what this right here is? I'll show them, cause I don't. Y'all see what that right there is? I've got three or four of them out of here. That's a striped potato beetle. Oh, is that what that they is? They eat nightshade plants, and that eggplant is a nightshade. Well, that's what's happening to my eggplant I can't we've never it. had them here in, in the, all the years i've lived here somebody around us has brought in plants or something or raising plants and they let them things come in here and they've migrated over here here's another one right here we're gonna have to check we've got to be on top of this that's for sure we got to look around through here because he was on a bean he wasn't even on a yeah and that's weird yeah, he was just hiding up under there. I mean, but this eggplant was planted last year, and we yeah. got a couple of eggplants in the fall, and then then the freeze hit it. Yeah, and I cut it all back, 
and it's come back out. You can see where I cut it back. Yeah, she cut it way back. I thought it was dead. <laughs> the freeze, I thought, killed it. And it's done amazing. Here's another. Now, here's another mom. Look at this. this. I had to cut some of this one out because you see my diva cucumbers? Look in here. Look, Look at my divas. Look. She got one hanging on. I've either. done eat it two or three out of here. Yeah, but my divas are going up to the roof, and we got to get them over on we this. Gotta get them, you got to get them over on that trail. There, but, well, this must be 25 of them on here. But look, these had done branched over. Yeah, they had taken over underneath And taken over here. my cucumbers, and my cucumbers were getting shaded out. So I cut all the mums out from behind it. But look at these. See, these are fixing to bloom also. Never seen that. And then this is my wild lettuce. It's going, it's to, going seed. to seed. Look at that wild lettuce going to seed in so. here. Well, guys, we're back out here in the blueberry orchard. Just thought we'd walk through and take a look. I mean, I wish you'd just look at this. These things are on here by the thousands. And how are, tall is this? Oh, that is about eight foot tall right now. I mean, this is our best blueberry grow, growing yet. Uh, I'm just sad that it's not raining. I mean, we got that one little shower we a, yesterday. We got an eighth of an inch last night. One eighth of an inch. I checked it while ago. It didn't wet the dirt, but like a half an inch deep. But that's something. It's best better. Oh, look at here. Look up in here. What you finding? Look in there. Wow. They're already turning. Ooh, that's a little bit early. Oh man, I'm gonna have to start looking now. Uh, now this is premier. And if it don't get any rain, they won't be no bigger than that right there. They they won't be real big. Mm. There's nothing like fresh, but look over here. Now this is the Alapahaws. Look at here. Look at him. Man, I gotta try one. Look at this. The Alapahaws are getting ready. This mm. is two weeks early. Isn't that good? Oh, you hadn't eaten one. No, I ain't eating them. I'm trying to well, eat pick one. a few to have. Oh, we're gonna have plenty. Look at this. Look out there. They're but starting to turn. If we don't stay on them, the birds is gonna stay on them. You know, the birds get them before we do. That's right. I tell you, we gotta get these off of him. Man, the stink bugs will find them too because they're they're in cycle right now. Yep, they're in cycle. They're starting to hatch out. And these are coming on early, which means the stink bugs will attack them. But yeah. look, look at this. Isn't that amazing? And this one is what? Nine. This one's a nine or ten feet. I can reach eight. It's about ten feet tall. Isn't that crazy? Man, oh my. So why are these so tall when everybody thinks blueberries are bushes? Oh, uh, this is a high bush variety. You okay. can get, there's low bush varieties and high bush. Um, I don't want the low bush varieties because they don't bear really well. They bear, but not to the quantity that these do. These here bear, I mean, just tons of berries. Look at this. I mean, every tree. Every tree. Just a little rain off and on. That's and what we have to have, just a little bit of rain. And I know people's gonna ask, can't you irrigate them? Well, I could irrigate them, I could. But um, I try to let nature do what it needs to do. Look at this one over here. That's something. Look at this. I mean, there's not many leaves on this tree compared to the others, but look at the berries. I mean, that is just really weird. And this is a premier. Yep. As opposed to this premier, look at the green and the berries. I mean, side by side, one has no leaves and a lot of berries. This one has a lot of leaves and limited berries really compared it's amazing 
I really am hoping we do get a lot of rain, you know, not a lot, but enough to pop enough them. to make these pop because they're kind of small right now. And the Lapahas don't get real big, but the premiers make big old berries. I mean, you look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Man, look at this tree. Boy, you talk about some berries now. And we've got a pecan in the middle of this one. Look at the clusters of these starting to get ready up in here. Look at that. And up here. I try not to get the ones that ain't quite all the way blue. Man. We were hoping to have a few more things done before we had to start getting up every morning picking blueberries but looks like we're gonna be picking like blueberries <laughs> looks like we're gonna have to oh kick it into double mode here looks like the blueberries are starting i mean this is early now for us about two weeks at least at least two weeks early which means possibly summer's going to come on a lot earlier this year well, it's been hot it's definitely the, I think it's the heat that we're having that's bringing them on earlier than what they normally are. But you know, the only good side to this is maybe the, maybe the heat will go in. And you know what's great about this blueberry patch? You can come right here and down there about, oh, uh, come and check this angle out right here. Down there about, this is about a 15, 20 foot bluff here going down into our pond. Uh, Elvis is resting. Elvis is down here resting along the edge of the shoreline. <laughs> and, and that's pond, not a real alligator, guys. <laughs> it's an alligator head floating around. And the pond is down about two foot. Yeah, because it's usually... And, and I'm telling you, this it's is... It's usually covering this right here. That's yeah, usually, that's usually sand underwater. is not there. So that tells you how far it is if you look around. Yeah. There's sand on the other side. I see, see where the grandkids have been all down there. Oh, did they make it down there? Oh, yeah. I see their feet prints in the sand. Oh, my. Yep, they whoop, that one jumped off down the hill down there. Ain't no recapturing that. But we're fixing to enlarge the we pond. Are. All this right in here is going away, right? Everything to your right over in here is going away. All, all this the way. to right in here? No, not quite that far up. Come right on here? back down. Right here. Past this pine tree. Past that pine tree, everything... In all there. in there is all going to go away, and we're going to make the pond go way back up in there. That is if diesel fuel is available. So while you're wrapping hay and moving it, when I help you get this on, this is what I'm doing, look. Oh, wow. That's some nice size huckleberries. I'm picking the huckleberries. We've got blueberries ain't no bigger than that. I know, but Isn't look. Isn't that amazing? Let me show you something over here. What's that? Look at this. <gasps> oh, our cherry tree. Look at the cherries. You gotta pick us some cherries. Look at that. Look at that. I mean, they're oh, just hanging. Y'all, that is beautiful. Look at that. First we... time ever having this, like, cherries. I know they got seeds in them, but we'll find something to do with them. We'll oh be making something. Look at Only that. Only the dark red ones is what I've heard. Oh, that's how ripe they are. They're just falling off. Yeah. That is amazing, isn't it? Look at that. We're going to have Man. huckleberries and cherries and blueberries. Look at these. These two are, but see, some of the others are not as red. You see the difference? Yeah, I'm looking at that. They've got and red. And there's one there. in the top, but I don't know how. It looks like it ain't quite there. I don't. But think look it at is. the blooms. I mean, look at the blooms. If this thing makes like it's blooming, man, we're gonna have cherries at Deep South. That's amazing. Oh my word. That is awesome. Never had cherries in the deep south other than wild ones. Now, right beside you is a wild cherry tree. Yeah. This tree, you look way up there in it. It is loaded with little berries up there. If you could see it. If you could see it. But, I mean, yeah, these 
or the wild cherries. And I don't know if the, you reckon the wild cherry pollinated this thing. <laughs> who who knows? But the sun's coming up, baby. Yep, we gotta get busy. And here's one of our culprits right here. See that right there? Stink bugs. Oh. We gotta get rid of him. They're hatching out right now. Okay, he didn't get on me, but yeah, you know, they're hatching out, and that's one of the culprits. These things, they sting them. So you've got to watch. But somebody said they're supposed to be odd shaped. They're not supposed to be smooth. They're not supposed to be smooth. They're lobed, and they think they said they're full of seeds. I guess we'll find out. Well, I, I ate one the other day. They're full of seeds. I can okay. guarantee you that. It's not like the maraschino cherries. Okay, they're not like the maraschino. No, them little candy now, things. This is good. the Barbados. Uh, Southern sweet cherry. Yeah, somebody was asking. I don't know if I can get to it, but let's show you. It shows them looking smooth. It does, but that's not but accurate. I, I, <laughs> maybe it ain't, or either the stink bugs are getting one of the two. the stink bugs are stinging them, making them do that. Yeah. But it's a southern cherry, and down here it says Barbados cherry. It grows here, that's all I know. And look at this. Look at that. Back to work. Back to work, yep. yep. 